We are here at the Davy Crockett Tavern in Morristown, Tennessee. And here is the road sign that says Crockett Tavern. Here stood the Crockett Tavern, established and operated by John and Rebecca Crockett, parents of Davy Crockett, 1786 to 1836. It was the boyhood home of this pioneer and the political leader of Tennessee, who was later a victim of the Alamo Massacre at San Antonio, Texas. Tennessee Historical Commission. And on the back side, it has a little thing that says, Donated in 2011 by the direct descendants of David Crockett and Ken. We wish to thank the David Crockett Tavern staff, especially our tour guide, Christina Mosley, for her hospitality and a look back at history that she gives us. We would also like to thank Christina for allowing us to videotape her as she gives the history of David Crockett's time in the tavern. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The upstairs loft is where the tavern guests would lodge. They would be about two to three men per bed or on the floor or outside if it's a good enough night. And then Davy and his eight brothers and sisters and his mom and dad would be down here in the main area uh, finding whatever spot they could sleep on until Davy's about 12. And then that's when Davy was a little naughty and he wouldn't go to school. and. Uh, his mom and dad would try to threaten him and his daddy would whip him and he'd go and in about four days total and got into fights with some bullies there and then his daddy would whip him again and then he decided well I don't want to face the whipping I'm about to get for this fight and so he goes off to the neighboring wilderness and flees uh, for an extended time period uh, doing a variety of jobs and then makes his way back here and then daddy sells him into indentured servitude and Davy is gone for four years and comes back to Morristown when he's 16 and then uh, finishes up the last debts that he still owes to his father um, and stays with the landowner and their family in the neighboring Panther Springs community where the state park's located and then at age 18 he's a free man and he starts going west so this is his uh, boyhood home this is actually a replica of that uh, the original building unfortunately during the civil war was used as a smallpox hospital and was later burned down to stop the spread of disease but what we used to build this museum the lumber the beams the logs came from area schoolhouses log cabins stores all dating right around the year 1800 by 1850 1860 time period so we give you as much of a feel for what it would have been like uh, back in Davy's age. So other than the four years he was gone, this was his boyhood home from age 10 to about age 20 time period. Okay, can you give us your name and what occupation okay, you do? Okay, I am Christina Mosley and I'm tour guide here at the Crockett Tavern Museum. Thank you so much for your You're time. You're welcome. <laughs> you are welcome. So uh, let me point out, like this is the main room where the tavern guest would uh, share the news of what was going on. They'd get their meal. Uh, they would get their drink and a tavern is not solely uh, what we would know it today we're just getting a hard drink uh, it was sort of your common room uh, it was the common house where you could gather get respite from the stage road and when you go outside in just a little bit when you see the railroad tracks that still follows that main spur going into Abington and Bristol, Virginia today to hook up to that main oh, wow. stage today. The other main stage, one of them would have been uh, Highway 11E. That is also one of the main spurs. So downstairs in the basement area, we have uh, Civil War artifacts, we have Native American artifacts, we have a first edition of Davies Autobiography, Everyday Tradesmith Tools, plus a fragment of the well that Davy's father John built himself, found in 1949 on the property. Cool. In the bedroom, next to uh, the bed there, you're going to see two flintlock rifles. 
The darker colored gun does date to the time period. It's right around 1800 to 1830 based off the gunsmith. And the lighter colored gun is a replica of one of Davy's guns. The original is now housed at the East Tennessee History Museum in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we have more out in the corn crib. We've got a Conestoga wagon that dates right around the year 1800, donated by one of our local families, the Bibles. Two gristmill stones. The smaller of the two came from a flooded gristmill accident that happened when Davy was about five. So we have got that oh. here on site. So a 230 year old gristmill stone. The last stop on uh, from the outside on your left is a weaving loom room. We have some original hand woven, hand dyed pieces behind the glass, two hand sewn quilts, and a weaving loom in place to get you to see that. So, oh, wow. Thank so you so much. You are welcome. Well, let me get this a little bit closer since yeah, we were sure. staying out. Absolutely. I was a truck driver and mm -hmm. the same. Oh, okay. And um, I've been a history nut since I was about 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I used to drive across country with two signs for stuff and all that. Mm -hmm. And we live in Dyer, and we started doing the history of the little town we grew up there. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, let's do tourism too. Yeah. And so that's what we've been doing for the past 10 years. Oh, okay. This is Fess good. Parker. Mm -hmm. The picture of Fess actually was, uh, that's him in downtown Morristown. He is on the uh, press junket for the upcoming King of the Wild Frontier movie. So that's him pictured in 1955. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. we, 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 in our gift shop too, we have like, the coonskin caps, we have the toy Betsy rifles, we've got the Disney films, we've got his autobiography, so we have a good collection of oh. materials. Now, this stuff here, like this, mm -hmm. the benches, and the logs in the wall, and how, how they're going together and stuff. Yes. My grandpa taught me how to do that. Oh, wonderful. He taught me how the joints, have, you, you put the joints together to where like this and this, mm -hmm. so that water would burn out. You get the rock and you get right. The water around. Right. Your, your little cup with the log suddenly will rot. Oh, okay. So you've got to have it very right. specific and precise. So it's got to be like this, and then okay. it joins to the bottom log like that. And the bottom log is cut at an angle, mm -hmm. and the top log is cut at an angle, and the angle is this way. Mm -hmm. So the bottom is the rock. Here we go, the steps. We see the little loft room. This is where the guests would sleep. This is a real bear skin rug and a real fox skin rug and coon skin cap.
And that's a raccoon. And baby's cradle. And we're going to go down into the basement. We just came down these steps. This is the apple cider press. And this is a butter churn. You can see the instructions right there, how they used to use it. And a great big old billows. Different saws. Brick Walkway, David Crockett Tavern Museums, Eagle Scout Project, two thousand six. Ben Gibson, Troop 91, First Methodist Church. Andrew Henry, Eagle Scout Project 2008, New Roof on Pole Shelter, Caulking Painting on Polly's Pavilion, Troop 91, First, Meth First United Methodist Church. Here we have some things about David Crockett and his life. And his legacy. Side of the tavern. An iron cauldron.
from the farm of James Franklin Kirkman, Kirkham, 11-23-1882 to January 30th, 1972, given in the memory of his daughter, Maddie Kirkham Christmas, 725 1910 to March 9th, 1992. And we have an old covered wagon. This was the Constodia C O N E S T O G A wagon. This took settlers from Virginia and North Carolina into the Appalachians. And here is the two stone mills that she was talking about with the accident. You can see that one's broken. And the other one's pretty cracked. And here's information about the grist mill. It says, Christian Bible, son of Hans Adam, moved his family to Greene County in the early 1700s in this wagon from Hampshire, Virginia, Hampshire County, Virginia. Descendants donated funding for this wagon cover in 2006. Building. This is about bird houses, as you can see right there. And it was the Eagle Scout Project in 2012. Alex Pritchard, Troop 91, First Methodist Church, Morristown, Blacksmith's Forge. I don't know if you can see in there or not the forge. That's locked up. Looks like it's in need of a little bit of repair, but this is the the um, corn crib that they talked about where they used to keep the corn to make moonshine and also for the family to eat and for their animals to eat. on this little patch here and see what we can discover. This is the loom. And you can see the cotton. And the different looming patterns that they could use. Some different quilts.
this one is open. Nope. Not much in there. <laughs> This way. And we are back to the front. Those are called tricorn hats. That looks like a Quaker hat. There's a candle opera and a corner shell. Coonskin hat. We got a looks like a silver fox fur. Another silver fox fur. Maybe some squirrels there, badgers. Oh, there's a raccoon fur and a bearskin rug. Second fireplace. There's a rocking chair. No clock.
All right, that's the Northampton Courier. Northampton, Massachusetts, March 13th. And I, it's either 1834. Yeah, I think it's 1834. <laughs> There's a baby crib. That looks like a a chair that is cross weave. That rocking chair right there is uh, cross weave. And they they build strips of bark, strips of wood, and weave those chairs together, and that's how they made this. Well, here's an old dulcimer. Candle holders. There's a lamp with a candle in it. Sort of like a kerosene ca or a hurricane lamp. And there's those, I think that's, I can't remember what that's called. But that's a tea kettle and that stand there. You see all those hooks and everything were made to put those on there. And some fireplaces had a rock that stuck out the side of it that they would put stuff on to heat up. And they called it a hob. There's an old chest. We're at the Crockett Tavern and Museum. And this is one of the chimneys on the house. And it appears to be made out of cut limestone. That's why it looks so rough. Uh, it looks like there might be a little bit of dolomite in there. See that pinkish looking stone right there. See that pinkish looking rock in there? And there's a few cut sandstone in there, and, and the sandstone actually cuts cleaner than the limestone. But um, that's what that is, cut limestone. Here comes the train. That train, I've been told, that railroad is still following the original railroad that come right by the clock at in the early 1800s. Looks like it's a high. Let's see 
either sand or silica that they're hauling work on. I think that's called a hay fork. There's a couple of old handmade uh, hoes. Stirs, probably for laundry or something. I'm not really sure what this box is. Maybe a plane, homemade pickaxes, hatchets. There's two man saws. Saddle. Uh, that is a ladies sidestep saddle. There they are. They're oxen. Hereford oxen. That's what they are. Jersey oxen. Texas longhorn oxen. Ash air oxen. Horseshoes. How to shoe a horse. Oxen shoes are split. These are the oxen shoes. Horseshoes, pony shoes. That looks to be some type of meat grinder. Oh, and there's an old, old homemade meat grinder. Look at that. There, that paper tells about long notching. shows how they connect together. I've talked about this several times. And here's some examples of those log notching. Here we go again. Log notching for a log cabin. The way that's done. And so that bottom log will not rot. different types of notching. That one's called a saddle notch. This is called a sharp notch. And this is called a dovetail notch, which is very similar to this right here. The axe in the log house. Here are some standard log home notches often made with only the axe. This is called a camper and notch. I didn't know what it was called, but I know how it's done. And I talk about that all the time. That they got square ends and they won't rot because the water will flow out of them. This is a cabin roof with shingles built down here in the side of a log house. There's a window in the house. Oh wow, look at this. There's a lock from the old courthouse at Dandridge. I guess that's his signature. And a quote from him, be sure you're right and then go home, go ahead. Alamo Stones. There's a copy of the marriage of Davy Crockett and Polly Finley, marriage certificate, August 12, 1806.
battery is dying. So I'll have to do this fast. Early foot warmers. Whiskey bottles and glass. There is an oxen yoke. Uh, not sure what that is. That's a, some type of hay fork to gather up uh, like wheat in the field. That says that's a butter churn. I've never seen a butter churn made like that. Another yoke. Uh, that's a rope maker. Those three hooks up there and it'll twist the rope. And this is probably the other end of the rope maker. You pull it and it, it would, the, the uh, string would come up and go through those three loops there and the loops would twist the, the string together and make three strings and then it would twist it on together and, and make a rope. Oh, there's a big bellows for a, a blacksmith. There's an apple cider press. Different types of woods. Here, again, they're hewing logs. Try to get that. Like I said, my battery is dying. And I'm getting a warning. Hey, I'm dying. So I'm trying to hurry up and get all this stuff before it does. Here's a thing of tools. Trying to do it slow, but get all of them as fast as I can so we can go back and pause it and show you exactly what we've got. These are different types, spruce wood, sassafras, coarse on sycamore, different types of tools, drill bits. There's an old anvil, homemade brooms, homemade kegs. And the thing about the Buckeye brooms, a clean sweep. Wagon. And that right there might be a salt kettle. Don't know what they did. It just says it's on cauldron. They don't say what they were doing with it. But it could be that they were rendering salt. Corn crib. I'm not sure what that is. And like I said, I'm running out of time. Looks like it's getting ready to shut down. We love you. We hope you enjoyed this video of the Crockett Tavern. Squirrel going up the tree there. And um, you have a blessed day. And thank you for watching Kentucky Tennessee Living and supporting our website and our YouTube and Facebook page. Thank you for walking with us through history as we look at the Davy Crockett Tavern, located in Morristown, Tennessee. Be sure to drop in and say hi to the historians there. And a special thank you to Christina Mosley for her wonderful tour. Thank you for watching and supporting Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring to you the history of Kentucky and Tennessee.